Hey everyone, it's Kara here from Boho Berry and I'm back with a brand new tutorial for you. This one involves Procreate and it's for your digital planner or for anything else you wanna use these tips for. I'm essentially gonna be showing you how to use shapes in Procreate to mask objects or images to put into your planner. All right, so I'm gonna open Procreate real quick and I'm gonna select a new document and I'm gonna make this screen size. And I have a bunch of shapes that I've shared in our private Facebook group that is linked down below for you. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import one of those here. So I'm gonna to go to image, insert a file, and I'm gonna to go to where I saved those shapes, which are in my digital planner file and vector shape masks. And you can see here that I have a few different shapes to choose from. I'm gonna choose one that's a planner page and bring that in and I'm gonna size it up just a tiny bit and a trick for resizing things in procreate if you're on the magnetic tool down here it will resize and still maintain the dimensions of your object or whatever it is you're trying to transform if you're on free form here it's just going to kind of shrink and expand things you may not want to lose uh, that perfect size so this shape in particular is made to fit exactly over one of my planner pages. So if you wanted to create a pretty layout and kind of put it in your notebook to cover up one of your planner pages, this is how you would do it. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is create a new layer above this shape. And remember, you can do this with any shape. You could even draw a shape in Procreate and use this exact same technique. So what I'm gonna do with this selected is I'm gonna tap on layer one and I'm gonna click select and you'll see that some gray lines appear behind that shape. That means that whatever I do, either on this layer or any other layer, it is only gonna color in the area where that specific shape is. So now I'm gonna go to layer two, and I'm gonna select a color, and I think I'm gonna go with my, my kind of teal, light teal color, and I'm just gonna drag this color into that shape. And you'll see that in the layers panel, now I have two separate shapes. I have the original, and then I have a brand new one that's the exact same shape because we masked it out, uh, but a new color. So this way I've preserved the original shape so I can use it again sometime, but I have a brand new one in the color that I want right above it. So now I'm gonna turn off that layer one, which is the original shape, and I wanna color a pattern over this paper to kind of make a patterned, patterned paper, <laughs> to kind of make patterned paper to put in my planner. So uh, I'm gonna select a darker, version of this teal just by going to the color wheel here and eh, kind of picking what I want. We'll go right there. And then I'm gonna select any brush I want. And you could literally just come on here. And I forgot we need to select this one so that we're only writing on that paper and not on the background. But you could just come in here and write and draw and create whatever pattern you wanted to on there. And you'll notice if I go off here, it's not, it's only coloring on that pattern. It's only coloring on that shape and not on the background. All right, so I'm gonna delete all that. Two fingers to tap removes your last stroke. There we go. And let's see, I wanna use a pattern brush. So I have some of these pattern brushes that I have in my shop for sale. Let me find them, there we go. And then you can just take this brush and literally just paint across the entire page. and now you have some cute patterned paper. Um, alternatively, you can try this with any different, these are some different pattern brushes that I have, but there are some that come pre-installed on your iPad in Procreate. So you can go to the textures panel here, and there are re some really cute ones here. So we have like some diagonal lines, so you could fill up your whole page with that. There's this cute like Victorian floral. You could fill it up with that. Um, there's so many different options. I really like this one that's just a plain grid, too. I think that's really pretty. There we go. Uh, but I'm going to use one of my pattern brushes. And I think I'm going to go with this one with, like, the big, the big bold flowers. And I'm just going to draw that pattern across, and I'm going to release that selection. So now you can see I have that pattern paper. Now, if you wanna add a label, I also have another shape in that pack. So I'm gonna go again to insert a file and I'm gonna go with the notebook label. 
and that's going to bring it in and now I can resize this down again remember you want to be on magnetic so that it doesn't lose its shape and put that wherever I want I'm going to go with right about there and now I'm going to go up to my layers panel and I'm not really worried about losing this shape so I'm just going to add the color right to it um, so I'm going to select this layer and I'm going to grab my white and I'm just going to fill that in. I'm going to zoom in here real big so that I can get that kind of smaller line. All right, there we go. So now I have this white label on the front of my planner page. Another thing that I like to do with this is to kind of make it a little more realistic is to add a little bit of a drop shadow to this label so that it looks like it's sitting on top of the page. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take this white label that we've just created and I'm going to swipe to the left and hit duplicate. And then on this bottom image, I'm going to turn this black. So I'm going to go to my black color and I'm going to tap on this. I'm going to hit select so that it's only filling that portion of the page. And I'm going to tap again and hit fill layer. And now we have a black label underneath this white label. I know you can't see it very well, but if I turn off the white label, you'll see the black one underneath. All right, so for this black layer, what I'm going to do to make it look like a drop shadow, make sure that layer is selected. I'm going to tap this little button up here that looks like a magic wand and I'm going to do a Gaussian blur and it says up here slide to adjust. So I'm just going to slide my stylus across the screen. You can see you can make it really, really blurry. I like to make it just ever so slightly blurry where I can start to see it behind that white label. And then I'm going to tap my arrow up top here that is going to select that layer. And I'm just going to gently tap on the screen to nudge that layer down about five times and I'm going to do about five times on the right hand side. There we go. So now you can see I have kind of this drop shadow there. Now that drop shadow to me, if I zoom in, it looks a little drastic. I want it to be a little kind of softer. So I'm going to hit that magic wand tool again and I'm going to go to opacity and same sliding action. I'm just going to slide that opacity down a little bit to where it's just a slight slight shadow around that label. Alternatively, you can go to your layers panel and tap on this N here and you can change your opacity with a slider right here too. So I'm going to put mine right about 65% and there we go. Now if I zoom out, you can see that, that looks much more realistic like there's kind of a sticker on the page. All right, and then to export this, I'm going to make sure that my background layer is turned off so that it's completely transparent and I'm gonna hit the wrench and share and save as a PNG. And I'm gonna save this to my camera roll. So just save image. And you can save this wherever you like in one of your cloud services as well. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to my planner and I'm gonna pick a tab. I'm gonna to go to my fitness tab here. And you can see I've already added this page, but I'm just gonna do it one more time to show you. So I'm going to tap and hold make sure that your read only tool is selected up there and I'm going to select image, go to photos or wherever you saved it, camera roll. And I'm going to bring that in right here. And now I need to resize this to fit that page. So what I like to do is use the page on the left and just kind of center it as well as I can and then resize so that it pretty much perfectly covers that white space. And then you can drag it over and add it to your page. And there we go. Now I'm gonna undo this because I like the one that I had before. And I'm gonna tap on this one and hit delete. And there we go. Now you can use this masking technique on a lot of different things. I'm going to show you all the different shapes that I have. I believe it's in this file here. All right, so I'm going to turn all of this off and show you the different shapes that I have. So I have, let me turn my background color on so that you can see everything well. I have this scalloped circle. We have a heart, a two different notebook labels. This one looks like a little pocket. This one is just a little hang tab. We've got a star and then of course we have the planner page and then I also have one that's a notebook cover. Uh, this is almost identical to the planner page. It's just a little bit larger and it'll fit on the cover of the spiral notebooks like your sticker book 
And then I also have one for washi tape shapes. And the washi tape shapes is probably my favorite, um, but I'll show you here. I used that same process. So I have my color layer that I put on top and then all these different patterns. I did them each on a different layer so that I could select them whenever I want to. And you can just create so much with these shapes. All right, so those are just a few examples. The other thing I wanted to show you was masking an image. So say you want, say you have a cute photo and you want to kind of cut it out in a heart shape. You can do that in Procreate too. So I'm gonna show you that really quickly. So I'm gonna grab another screen size document and I'm gonna grab one of those shapes and I'm gonna go with the heart. There we go. And now I'm gonna pick a photograph that I want to crop out with this shape. So I'm gonna come here and insert a photo. And let's see, let me go with some of our family photos here and let's see if I can find a cute one that I wanna add in. Oh, this is one of my favorite photos ever. All right, this is me and Bella in New York and I'm just gonna click and drag to kind of zoom this photo out. And one trick here is to make this layer a little more transparent so that you can see the heart through it and you can see how you're gonna be cutting out your shape. So again, you can just open your layers panel, tap on the N and then drag your opacity slider down there. And now you can see, I can kind of see that heart shape through it. So I know exactly where this picture is gonna cut. So I'm just gonna move this photo to where I want it. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so now I have two layers. I have my heart and I have my image on top. And what I wanna do now is tap on layer one, hit select, and then make sure down here in the bottom you're in freehand. And then I'm gonna tap on my image layer. And then I'm gonna come back down here to the bottom and these two parallel lines right at the very bottom, I'm gonna tap those twice. And now you'll see that the image kind of pops through that heart. And if I open my layers panel, it's created a new layer from that selection. So I can turn off my image and my heart. And now I have just this layer with this picture in the heart. And I can resize that and rotate it and do whatever I want with it. I'm just going to go here, turn off my background layer, and again, save it as a PNG. So it has the transparent background and save it to my camera roll. And then you can use this wherever you want. And I'm just gonna show you what it looks like in the planner. I'm gonna hit image, go to my photos and my camera roll, and here it is. And I can crop this down to kind of get rid of that extra border around it. There we go. And then I can resize and rotate it here. All right, y'all, that is gonna do it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, definitely let me know down below. I know it was a lot to cover. Um, I do have another tutorial on this over on Vimeo where it is just me recording my screen. So if that's easier for you to watch, I'll make sure those videos are linked down below for you. And also I'd love it if you'd join us in our Boho Berry Digital Planners Facebook group. Uh, we have a ton of people in there already and everyone's sharing these awesome tips and tricks for digital planning. So even if you don't have a Boho Berry digital planner, you're welcome to join, or if you're even just curious about digital planning, uh, we have a lot of great tips in there. All right, y'all, I hope you have a great rest of your Monday. I will talk to you very soon. Bye.